now take you into a service already in progress where Pastor Ashish exhorts the congregation and leads them in making the declaration. And right after this is a life-changing message for you. Please hold your Bible high up in the air this morning and say this out loud and strong with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I'm blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive His words. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender in jesus name amen this morning i just want to preach a very simple message for us it's a study on a greek word and it's a very simple message something you've probably heard before it's not new but it's always good to revise and review things you've heard in the past it's about the greek word sozo Uh, If you want to spell it down, write it down in English, you probably write it as S-O-Z-O or S-O-D-Z-O, whatever you want to spell it. Sozo. It's uh, one of the Greek words used for salvation in the New Testament. There are several Greek words that are translated salvation. And sozo is one of them. This word sozo is a word that is used most commonly in the New Testament for salvation. It's used over 110 times in the New Testament, translated as salvation. And this morning, my objective is just to remind us, perhaps, or maybe just awaken us to what this word really means. So everything that is involved in this word, salvation. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus brings us salvation. He saves us. What does that mean? We are supposed to take the message of salvation to the world. What are we talking about? This word sozo, that's translated salvation, as we will see from a couple of examples here this morning, is a comprehensive word. It's a big word. You know, when we talk about salvation, many times we just think about spiritual salvation, receiving forgiveness of sins. So like three people got saved. So when we say that, when we use that word saved, we... By default, in our minds, we're thinking about people who've got forgiveness of sins. They believed in Jesus Christ to forgive their sins. And that's correct, but it's not complete. Because the word salvation is is much broader than just forgiveness of sins. In the New Testament, the word sozo, the same word that's used for salvation, save, it's also used to talk about healing from sickness and disease. That same word. That same word is also used in the context of deliverance from demonic powers. That same word is also used in the context of rescuing and preserving from harm and danger. So, as far as the New Testament is concerned, when the New Testament talks about salvation, it's a big package that we're talking about. We're talking about people being Forgiven for their sins, healed from their sicknesses, delivered from every demonic oppression, and rescued and preserved from harm and danger. That's what salvation is all about. Amen? So salvation is a comprehensive word. It includes all of this. So let's let's look at some scriptures as examples here. If you turn with me to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the angel comes... And announces the name of Jesus. And the angel says in Matthew one twenty one, it says, She will bring forth a son, you will call his name Jesus, for he will save. That word, sozo. He will save. He will bring sozo. Save his people from their sins. So here is salvation in the context of spiritual salvation from sin. Being rescued or saved from sin. Same thing in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts 4, 12, Peter is preaching and he says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Sozo. 
There is no other name through which we experience sozo. Again, talking about a spiritual salvation. But the same word sozo is also used in the context of healing, physical healing. For example, in Matthew chapter 9, verses 21 and 22, Matthew chapter 9, verses 21 and 22, here is this woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. And she comes through the crowd and she touches the hem of Jesus' garment in Matthew 9, 21, 22. Verse 21, it says, For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. And verse 22, Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. The woman was made well from that hour. That word well, sozo. Or in some of your Bibles, she was healed from that hour. Sozo, healing. Another example of the word sozo or salvation, the context of healing, is in Mark chapter 6 and verse 56. I mean, there are many references. I'm just speaking out a few for us this morning. Mark 6 and verse 56. Wherever he, that is wherever Jesus went, into villages, cities of the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment And as many as touched him were made well. The word well is sozo. As many as touched him were healed. Sozo. Salvation. They experienced salvation. It brought healing to their bodies. Mark 10 and verse 52. Here is blind Bartimaeus. He's blind. And he cries out to Jesus. Jesus stops on the way. And heals him. And then this is what the Lord Jesus says in Mark 10 verse 52 then Jesus said to him go your way your faith has made you well the word well sozo your faith has brought salvation your faith has brought healing your faith has made you well same word for salvation used for healing in James chapter 5 Verses 13 through 16, James 5, 13 through 16. It says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is any of, anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will sozo, will save the sick. Or will heal the sick. The Lord will raise him up. And if he have committed sins, he will be forgiven. So the same word salvation. Used in the context of healing of, from sickness. The prayer of faith will bring salvation to the sick. Causing healing to him. And the Lord will raise him up out of his sickness. And even forgive any of his sins. So sozo is used in the context of forgiveness of sins. It's used in the context of healing from sickness and disease. It's also used in the context of deliverance from demonic powers. Example is in Luke chapter 8 and verse 36. You know the story of this demoniac at Gadara. This man who had a legion, probably more than 6,000 demons in him, meets with Jesus, the Lord delivers him. And what is the word used to talk about his deliverance? In Luke 8 and verse 36, it says, They also who had seen it told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. That word healed, it's sozo. This man who was demon possessed experienced sozo. What what did he experience? Deliverance from demonic powers. So sozo is Salvation, the New Testament, also includes deliverance from demonic powers that attack our lives, affect us, uh, whatever they do. It's included in the word sozo, deliverance from demonic powers. And lastly, sozo also means to be rescued and preserved from harm and danger. Salvation includes being rescued and preserved from harm and danger. Look, for instance, in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 25. Here are Jesus and his disciples. They're in the boat, sailing across the sea. 
and there's a storm. The boat's about to sink. And here's what the disciples ask for. Matthew chapter 8, verse 25. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. Give us sozo. Give us salvation. Lord, save us. We are perishing. And then, you know, the rest of the incident, Jesus comes in, comes a storm. But they experienced salvation. In this context, salvation was preservation from harm and danger for them. The Lord preserved them. They experienced so-so. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 18. He uses the word so-so in the context of being preserved from harm and danger. We'll read verses 17 and 18. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord will deliver. Rescue, some of your versions may say. That's the word sozo, the Lord will deliver. Sozo, the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. So Paul is using the word sozo, translated deliverance or rescue from harm that people would intend against his life, even from the mouth of the lion. The Lord will deliver me from every evil work. He will preserve me from every harm against my life. Sozo, salvation. So this morning, what I want us to understand is that sozo, salvation in the New Testament, what you and I have received through the Lord Jesus Christ, what you and I offer to the world, is not just forgiveness of sins, but as far as the New Testament is concerned, it includes healing for the body, it includes deliverance from demonic powers, it includes rescue and preservation from harm and danger for your life. Amen. So when we say Jesus Christ is our Savior, we are not just saying that He will forgive our sins, but we are saying the salvation He brings will heal people of all their sicknesses, will deliver people from every demonic work, it will rescue and preserve people from harm and danger. That's Jesus Christ and His salvation. Amen. So when you receive Jesus... When you embrace Jesus as your Savior, don't limit Him just to Him saving you from sin. He is your healer. He is your deliverer from every demonic work. He is your rescuer and preserver from harm and danger for your life. If you're in a boat that is sinking, you can say, God, I want your salvation. Jesus is your Savior. Amen? And when you present Jesus to the world... When we take the message of Jesus Christ to a lost and hurting world, let's not only tell them that Jesus can forgive their sins, that's important, but let's not just say that. Let's tell them Jesus heals. His salvation brings healing for every sickness. His salvation brings deliverance from demonic powers. His salvation brings rescue and preservation from harm and danger. That's the Jesus and that's the salvation we have to offer to the world. Amen? Now think about this. Is salvation for everyone? If a hundred people come forward here saying, I want my sins forgiven, should I tell them, you know, some of you may be forgiven and some of you may not? Is that right to do? No. As far as the word of God is concerned, if a hundred people come forward to say, I want to have my sins forgiven, I want Jesus as my savior, All hundred have the equal opportunity, have the equal right to receive forgiveness for their sins. That's salvation. Amen. Now, in the same way, if a hundred people come forward for healing, do I have the right to tell them, God may heal some of you, but God may not heal the others? Do I have a right to say that? Some people's theology is slowly changing. I do not have the right to say that. Because salvation, which includes healing, is for everyone. Which means healing is for all. And I have no right to tell some sick person that it might be God's will to heal you, or maybe it's God's will to keep you sick. It's equivalent for me telling a sinner, it might be God's will for you to stay unforgiven and go to hell. Because salvation includes forgiveness, it includes healing, it includes deliverance, it includes preservation, it includes, it's it's a package, it's wholeness for the whole person. That's what Jesus brings. 
So salvation is for all. So healing is for all. God wants every sick person well. He wants every sinner forgiven. He wants every demon possessed person delivered. He wants every person in harm and danger rescued and preserved. That's salvation. And it's for all. Now if you're walking down the street and you find somebody there and you get a chance to talk to him, would you pray, Lord, is it thy will to save the soul? Should I tell him about Jesus who can forgive the sin? You wouldn't do that. You would just tell him, you know, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was buried. He rose to begin. If you believe, you will have your sins forgiven. Now, in that same conversation, you have every right to tell him. And if you're sick, Jesus will heal you. And if you're, you're troubled by demons, Jesus will deliver you. And if your boat is sinking, Jesus will pr- rescue you and preserve you from that as well. You have every right to say that that is the full gospel. That is the gospel of salvation. Amen. Now, how do we receive salvation? What does it cost? Which church do you have to belong to to experience salvation? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 is a verse of this morning's message, very basic. All of you know it. You've been through our children's church, I suppose. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 says, For by grace you are saved. Through faith. So how does salvation happen? It happens by grace through faith. By grace through faith. By grace through faith. God extends it to us by grace. Meaning we don't merit it. No sinner is forgiven. Because they did, you know, they earned forgiveness. No sick person is healed because he earned his healing. No, it's by grace. Because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. It's given freely by grace. Which means every sinner can be forgiven. Every sick person can be healed. Every demonic person can be delivered. Every person in harm and danger can be rescued. Based simply on the grace of God. God's grace brings salvation. But on our side we must receive it by faith. By grace through faith. How do you experience forgiveness of sins? By grace, through faith. How do you experience healing? By grace, through faith. How do you experience deliverance from demonic powers? By grace, through faith. How do you experience rescue and preservation from harm and danger? By grace, through faith. Now the kind of faith we are talking about is not the faith that says, I believe God can. A lot of people, including the devil, would say, I believe God can. The kind of faith you're talking about is a faith that says, I know he will. I know he will. Can you imagine a sinner coming up and saying, Lord, I believe you can, but I'm not sure if you will forgive my sins. He may never experience that. He needs to come and say, Lord, I know because I believe in Jesus, my sins are forgiven. It's a faith that says, I know he will. Not the kind of faith that says, I believe he can. Amen? The same thing with healing. It's not enough to say, I believe God can heal me. Everyone can say that. Even the unsaved man who's never been to church will affirm that God can heal and God can do anything. But it's very different when you say, I know He will heal me. And that's the kind of faith that receives. You don't have to go to church to say, I believe God can. You ask the stranger on the, on the road. And he'll say, I believe God can. Yeah, God can do anything. Don't ask, don't trouble me. He can do anything. But to know that he will, and he will do it for you. That's the faith. When the woman came with it through the crowd, she said, I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She came with that kind of faith. The faith that says, I know it will happen. I know he will. And Jesus turned around and said, daughter, your faith has brought you salvation. I know he will. Say, so how do I have a right to say I know he will? Because he said so. Because that's the word of God. He said that you will receive healing by believing. Amen. I know he will. So if you are sick this morning, you say, I know my God will heal me. Why? Just the same way you said that your sins are forgiven. Why do you say your sins are forgiven? Because you believe that on the cross Jesus Christ took your sins and he paid, for, paid the price for it. So therefore you say, 
I'm forgiven. Now, on that same basis, you say, I know I'm healed. Why? Because on the cross, he took my sicknesses and my diseases, and by his wounds, I have been healed. Healing is yours. Amen? So how do we experience salvation? By grace, through faith. You don't earn it, but you receive it by faith, which means Anyone, the smallest amongst us and the greatest amongst us, receives it on, the, on equal ground, by grace, through faith. If you are in a difficult situation and your boat is sinking, so to speak, and the storms of life are, uh, are pushing you down, you know, salvation is what you need. How do you receive it? By grace, through faith. That's what happened to the disciples. They said, Lord, save us. Give us so-so. Cried out to him. So salvation is for all. You receive it by grace through faith. Before we close. How do we release that kind of faith? How do we express, how do we release faith in God? And this is mentioned three things, three ways by which we express or release faith in God. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 tells us, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. So, so. You will have salvation. So what must I do? Confess with the mouth. Believe in the hearts. I will experience salvation. If you believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Declare it with your mouth. Says you will receive salvation. So that's one way. By which you release faith to experience the saving work of God. Whether it's for the forgiveness of your sins, for the healing for your body, whether it's a deliverance from demonic power, whether it's uh, rescuing, preservation from a difficult circumstance. In the middle of that, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is my rescuer from this situation, doesn't matter how high the waves are, doesn't matter how low I seem to be going, my Jesus brings salvation to me in this situation, He will rescue me, He will deliver me. If you believe in your heart, you say it with your mouth, the Bible says you will have salvation. That's one way. Another way that we can release salvation is through prayer. We just read in James 5 and verse 15. The prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer of faith. So the prayer that's offered in faith. So you've got faith in your heart, you pray. What will happen? You'll receive salvation. The prayer of faith will save the sick. Salvation comes in response to that prayer of faith. Another way to release your faith. Is through action. It's through action. What you do. You act your faith. You, you know that God will heal you. Therefore you do something in accordance to that. You know God will come through for salvation with you. Out of, bring rescue and deliverance from that difficult situation. So you act your faith. Acting your faith is another way to express your faith. To release your faith. And receive salvation. The woman with the issue of blood. She walked through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. She did something. She acted of faith. When Jesus was in Capernaum, he was preaching in this house. It was a life group meeting. And some friends, one of their friends, some, some, a group of guys had their friend who was paralyzed. They put him on a bed. They came to the house with Jesus preaching. Mark chapter 2 and I think Matthew chapter 9. And uh, they, couldn't have ac- they couldn't get access into the house because there's a big crowd. So they went up the roof. A tiled, house, a tiled roof, I suppose, and they made way, moved all the tiles, let the friend down on the stretcher to the place where Jesus was preaching. And the Bible says, Jesus seeing their faith, he saw their faith. How did he see it? By what they did. They did something. If they hadn't believed that Jesus Christ would heal their friend, they wouldn't have gone through all the trouble to tear open the roof and you know, lower the friend down. But Jesus saw their faith and he forgave sins and healed that paralytic boy. So we express faith through what we do. James tells us in James 2, faith without works is dead. Meaning it's lifeless. It's unproductive. To say that I know he will, but I not act according to it, it's unproductive. Faith without works is dead. It's lifeless. 
So we release faith by what we do. Many times Jesus told people who are sick to do something they couldn't do. To the man who had his hand withered, Jesus said, stretch out your hand. To the man who was lying on the bed for many years, Jesus said, arise, make your beds. He told them to do something. And as they obeyed, salvation came. Amen? So salvation, therefore, is for all of us. And uh, the Jesus that you and I believe in is the Jesus who not only forgives sins, He heals us, He delivers us from demonic powers, He rescues us and preserves us from harm and danger. That's Jesus Christ, your Savior. And you can experience His salvation. Every time you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Every time you pray a prayer of faith, Every time you act your faith, you experience His saving work in your life, in your circumstance, in your situation. Amen? And the Jesus that we take to the world is a Jesus who not only forgives sins, but heals bodies. He delivers from demonic powers. He rescues from harm and danger. That's the Jesus we take to the world. That's the gospel which brings salvation to everyone who believes. Amen? And Jesus is here this morning. Amen? Jesus is here as our Savior. Your Savior and my Savior. So I want us this morning just to receive salvation, just by faith. The faith that says, I know He will. I know He will. Because sometimes we are so educated, we are so educated into unbelief. We are educated out of faith and into Unbelief. Sometimes education is such a problem. Because it's not wrong, but I'm just saying it becomes a problem when it comes to matters of faith. Because when you want to believe, your mind is thinking, figuring out all the 101 reasons why it should not happen. And your heart is trying to believe, saying, I know he will. And that's the problem with all of us city people. But that's where we need to be childlike in faith. And say, Lord, you're my savior. I know you will. Because that's who you are. Amen? So this morning, let's have childlike faith. Receive the saving work of Jesus in our lives. What area of life do you want to experience? His salvation. Maybe your sins are forgiven, but maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you need some deliverance from some demonic oppression over your life. Maybe you just need rescue and preservation from some harm and danger that threatens you. It could be a financial situation. It could be a situation at home. It could be a situation in the workplace. Whatever it is, these disciples were sinking in the boat. You and I don't travel by boat today, but we have other situations that could sink our lives. And he's a savior in the middle of that. Amen? Let's chat up together. We're going to pray, believe God, and receive His saving work in our lives. We're going to take some time to pray. I want you to believe. I want you to expect it. And I want you to expect some things to happen. Because Jesus is here. It's not a boring Sunday morning service. He is here. He's our Savior. He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. He's here to rescue and preserve from harm and danger. He's here to forgive sins. He is Jesus, our Savior. And salvation is simply by grace, through faith. By by grace, through faith. His grace is already releasing it for you and me. So releasing salvation for you and me. His grace already brings healing to you. His grace brings wholeness to your mind, your emotions. His grace already releases that. We're not trying to convince and twist God's arm and say, please give it to me. He's already extended it. It's a matter of you and me saying, Lord... With childlike faith, I receive. It's mine. I'm taking it. I know you will do it for me. Because salvation is for all. Forgiveness is for all. Healing is for all. Deliverance is for all. Rescue and preservation is for all. It's for you personally. Amen? So we're going to believe God for that. Let's start with the salvation, the healing and deliverance aspect of salvation. Let's pray for that first. It only takes a prayer of faith to heal. A prayer of faith to heal. He's the one who does it. He's the Savior, not you and me. He extends it to us by grace, meaning I'm giving it to you for free. 
Not because you merit it. Not because you've been good last week. But because he died on the cross. Rose up again. And in his grace he gives it to you and me. He extends healing to you and me. But we receive by faith. Say Lord I know you will do it for me. Many times we say God you'll do it for the other person. But this morning I want you to say God you will do it for me. You will do it for me. So let's pray for healing. Let's pray for deliverance right now. And let's see what the Lord will do in our midst. When there was a man with a withered hand, Jesus said, stretch out your hand. This man who was lying on the bed, Jesus said, arise, take up your bed and walk. Meaning, he expected that to happen right now, not tomorrow. Now there are times things take place, things take place over time, but expect now, expect healing now. Jesus is your savior now. Nobody comes to Jesus and says, God, forgive me my sins. And they expect that forgiveness to take place five years from now. They're expecting to be forgiven that very moment. Same thing for healing. Expect to be healed now. Expect healing now. Expect wholeness now, right now. It only takes uh, less than a moment for God to make you well, whatever it might be. Someone you'd expect it by faith. His grace extends it to us. We receive by faith. So we're going to pray. Now if you want some work of healing to be done in your body or some deliverance to be done for you, He is your Savior. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. Release those bodies. In Jesus' name, be healed. Bones, be healed. Nerves, tendons, ligaments, be made whole in Jesus' name. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Lord, we by faith receive salvation. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. You know, when God heals, we also have the responsibility to keep our healing. How do you keep your salvation? The same thing. It's faith. It's grace that always extends it from his side. And it's constant faith that retains that salvation. The Bible says, work out your salvation. You got your salvation, keep working at it. Right? So, even so for healing, even so for deliverance, that faith, keep that faith, that keep that believing in your heart, confessing with mouth, keep that going. Saying, God, you have healed me. My body is healed. My body is healed. I believe by his straps I've been healed. Believing that, confessing it. Retain, keep your salvation, keep your healing. Amen? So keep your healing. How? Continue to believe in your heart, save with your mouth. Believe in your heart, save with your mouth. Jesus is your Savior. Yesterday, today, and for ever. He's the same Jesus. The Jesus who forgives, who heals, who delivers, who rescues, and preserves. That's the whole package. Believe. Confess. Amen? Now, before we close, does anyone here, you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you your sins. You've never done that before. You're not sure that your sins are forgiven. You're not sure that if you were to die today, you know, if, if anyone dies in their sins, the Bible says the result of sin is death. Meaning it's going to take us straight to hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. There is a heaven, there's a hell. Whether you like it or not. And even if you say it's not, that doesn't make it go away. And our sins by default are taking us to hell. We need Jesus, our Savior, to save us from our sins. Bring us into the kingdom of God. Take us into heaven. Make us children of God. So is anyone here, you've never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive your sins? I want you to pray a prayer with me. Where you pray and say, Jesus... Come save me. Forgive me my sins. I want you to pray a prayer with me, please. If you've never done this before, just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Make me a new person, Lord. Bring me into your kingdom. I give my life to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you.
Though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people, yet the Lord shall arise upon you. And His glory will be seen upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also, visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.